So I'm an application engineer for Tektronics in the video division. I've been dealing with a lot of different issues that have come up in closed captions and hope to be able to address most of those for you as we go through all of this. The government has mandated that we be able to show captions on our screen for the hearing impaired folks that are within our audience of listening. And through the years, there's been a number of changes to the rules and regulations. In 1993 was when it first pretty much started that required all analog television to uh, have the ability to show captions if they were 13 inches or larger. In 2002, the FCC required captions of our DTV programming. And as things moved on, uh, depending on the type of presentation, whether it was just coming from television station or all video program distributors uh, have been added to the list. Lately, uh, in February 2014, just some new improvements, basically just further defining uh, the things about captions, trying to make them more accurate and keeping them synchronized as close as we can with the voice and a few other little things have come up lately. So within the DTV closed caption circuit here, what we have is the CEA 708, which defines uh, our caption channel. And if you look in the middle, we've got a DTV CC transport channel. That DTV CC transport channel is the EIA 708 transport channel. Inside of that is a complete EIA 608 payload and our DTV CC payload. It is mandatory that we actually carry both the NTSC caption, the 608 captions, as well as the 708 captions. Those are all carried in the one DTV transport channel. Now inside of there, the 608 data is supposed to run at 960 bits per second, and the 708 data rate is supposed to be 9600 bits per second. Those two values become very interesting and part of the mix when uh, the pieces come up that state the data rates because how we put the captions in is different for 1080 content than it is for 720 content. In 1080i content, we insert captions in field one at frame rate. So all captions are inserted into the video at the frame rate of the video. And the frame rate for 1080i is 29.97 frames per second where the frame rate for 720 captions is 59.94 frames per second. So the amount of data that we need to send in 720 to get the same throughput has to be half the amount of data that we're going to send in a 1080 payload. Because since we're sending it at every single frame and the frame rate is 59.94, and in 1080, the frame rate's 2997, 1080 is going to have twice as much data sent every time we send a CDP, a caption data packet. That's where we get into really unique issues with our content. So, and I'll address more about that as we go on here. So, Within our waveform monitors, we need the ability to be able to view the captions on the screen so that when we're looking at our SDI plant, we can verify that, yes, I have the full 608 caption payload and I have the full 708 caption payload. So we can go into our waveform monitors and we can actually set up 
multiple picture windows to where, in this case, on the left-hand side, bottom left tile, we're actually viewing the 708 payload, and on the bottom right-hand tile, we're actually viewing the 608 payload. If you are sending multiple services, so you're sending in 608 CC1 and CC3, we could actually put two more picture windows up and actually watch CC1 and CC3 for the 608 payload and service one and service two for the 708 payload for multi-language. And you could actually verify that all captions are there and being placed on the screen at the correct times. So as we go through, there are a number of tools that are provided that will allow you to look at different aspects of the captioning as we go through. So we have a picture window here that will allow us to check that the captions are up. And as you can see at the top of the uh, pictures, the left-hand window is the CEA 708 captions looking at service one. It also will give you any rating information that is carried along with the data, as well as if you turn on the AFD, it will actually list what AFD codes are actually being presented. On the right-hand side is the 608 payload, also showing the uh, fee chip rating, or the service advisory rating. One thing to note about the uh, conditional access or the uh, US TV ratings, that data is carried in the 608 payload only as part of the XDS data. There is no provisions within 708 to carry that data. It is expected within 708 to be able to extract that data out of either PSIP, if you're a ATSC broadcast, or via the guide data that's sent down for cable or satellite services. Only 608 has the actual embedded data within the caption stream. For 708, it's expected to be on a secondary service and then married in the TV or the set-top box with the video you're actually viewing. We can also have a status window that will show us what services are actually being presented and the number of services. So if you look at the top left-hand corner, you can see that I've got a 608 payload with CC1 and CC3 in it. Right below that is the 708 payload with service one in it. Uh, one of the issues here, if you look at this right off the bat, is that I've got twin services in my 608 payload, but I only have one service in the 708 payload, which would mean that if someone was in their kitchen on a small TV set and actually watching the SD service and they had captions up in their kitchen and they were getting the Spanish captions if it was CC3 and it happened to be Spanish, they'd go walking into their living room to their big set, try to get service two on the 708 and there'd be no service two available. So that's a definite issue that we need to make sure that whatever service we have is carried in both the 608 and the 708 and the same exact services are carried at the same time. The uh, other data you see down here, like I said, the VCHIP rating, the TSID, the CGMS, and the broadcast flag, that's all part of that XDS payload data that's actually extracted out of the 608 service. So within the SDI stream, we need to be able to verify where the data is. So unlike 608 captions in analog TV, where we actually put it on a physical line that was part of the active video so that it would get through all of our plant, today we bury the 708 CDP caption data packet in the vertical blanking information. And we need to be able to tell that the data is present, the data doesn't have any errors in it, and the line that it's being inserted on. So 
we can expand the uh, uh, data inspector window to where we can actually look at the 708 CDP, which has a DID, SDID of 6101. We can see that it is present. We can see that there are no physical errors from a CRC perspective from the packets. One issue with this one happens to be the line number that this is coming on. It never should be lower than line nine. When you get back to line four, like this one is, you're getting back into the vertical switch window, which is reserve space for doing switching from one stream to another stream, which means that the stream will most likely get interrupted and actually corrupted any time you have to run through any type of SDI switch, be it a router or a any other device that you have. So the standard says that the data should be carried any place after four lines after the switch point to active video. But the fourth line after the switch switch point is the preferred line. The fourth line after the switch point ends up being line nine in either a 1080 or a 720 system. So the normal preferred point that captions should be on is line nine, but within the standard, they allow it to be on any line up to active video. Now this can cause issues when processing gear expects it to be on a specific line and somebody sends it on another line and somebody doesn't go looking for it on that specific line and goes ahead and inserts captions. And then we have a mess because you get captions on the line you expect it to be on, and then you've got captions on the line it was originally on that you didn't realize it was on. One of the unique things about any of the SDI data in the vertical blanking interfield is that all of the data from a waveform, if you just go into a waveform and go into line select like we used to do for line 21 for standard def captions, is all of the data looks the same. It just looks like a jumble of bits running back and forth. And you really can't ID one type of data packet from another type of data packet. And you don't know exactly what it is you're looking at. So you need some type of other tool that's actually going to go in and read the header and say, yes, this is a 6101, it is captions, and it is placed on this line. The thing you don't want to see is those captions placed two different places within your stream. So when we look at the CDP, we can also take that ANTS data inspector and actually bring it up full screen if you highlight the 6101, the 708 CDP, and we can actually see the entire payload of what's being sent every time the packets are coming in. Hopefully you never have to get down to this depth, but unfortunately in today's environment we have to do it all too often for a number of different issues. One of which being making sure that the correct number of packets are being sent because within the standard there are several different payload sizes that are legal to send, but a lot of processing gear will not recognize those. And I'll elaborate on that in just a little bit. So when we have captions come up on the screen, one of the things that we see is you get a service and then you get captions on the screen. If they were placed in the stream twice, like I was just talking about, you're looking for them on line nine, they weren't there. So you happen to insert them on line nine, but unbeknownst to you, the captions were actually sitting up on, you know, say line 18 within the vertical blanking interval you'd end up with Klingon on the screen. And if you actually look at this for those Trekkies out there, this is actually Klingon. But you end up with captions on top of captions. And it can be very confusing to see actually what's going on in the environment without being able to look at exactly what types of data packets are actually being sent. Within what we've got 
in today's world, the majority of the material for a 720 uh, station that runs 720 material, if you do not create that material yourself, the chances are that it's actually beginning its life as 1080i material. And we need to cross-convert that material from 720 over to or from 1080 over to 720. Well, one of the easiest ways to cross-convert material is you can take a tape, put it in a tape deck, and you can actually set the output of that tape deck to output that data as 720. You set up a second tape deck to record that data, and then tell the deck to copy my ANTS data on line 9 across. Well, that is a definite no-no to do because one of the things you end up doing in doing this process is you're taking 1080 data and you're placing 1080 captions in a 720 stream. The caption data packet will be twice as big as what it should be, and about two-thirds of the processing gear, be it either caption decoders that go on the screen or gear that you have processing it in-house, is going to end up barfing on that, and you're going to have really screwed up captions. What we need to do is actually cross-convert the video from 1080 to 720 and actually take out the ANTS data packet, actually cross-convert the ANTS data packet from a 1080i packet to a 720p packet, and then reinsert that packet back into the stream with the correct number of bytes and going in at the correct frame rate being inserted. So basically going in twice as often with half as much data in it, but the data spread out correctly within the packet. So looking at this particular stream here, there's a few things that you want to verify whether you're a 720 house or a 1080 house that your captions are looking correct. So for a 720 house, the first thing you need to do is verify that the ancillary data that you're getting for your captions, that the frame rate is set correctly. So if you notice on the CDP, it says present, then it says frame rate, right where I have that red arrow. So the frame rate for 10 or for 720p is 5994. That data is not being read off of the SDI. That data is actually being read out of the caption data packet that we are actually inserting in the transport stream. Uh, so we need to make sure that the correct amount of data is uh, being presented. So the second piece is that the number of uh, 608 bytes will be two. Now, the number of 708 bytes to the right of that is going to vary all over the place. It'll show zero, it may show four, it may show eight, it may show 12, but it will be varying all over the place. But the 608 bytes will always be consistently two bytes of data. If you are a 1080 house or in this case, getting 1080 material in your 720 payload, what will happen is it'll actually show a frame rate of 2997, which is the 1080i frame rate, and it's going to glow red like a Christmas tree. The second piece you'll also notice is that they're sending twice as many 608 data bytes. Most of the gear is expecting only the two bytes of 608 data. So the extra two bytes that are being sent generally get stripped out. Those extra two bytes can be part of the normal everyday uh, captions that are going on the stream. So you could actually destroy even your 608 captions by putting the wrong data rate in the stream. The nice thing about it is the waveform monitor will tell you that the frame rate is incorrect. You'll also get all kinds of field one caption errors in the error log popping up because it's trying to send field one data and there is no field one technically within a 720p transmission. 
for a 1080 screen, sorry for the resolution of this, it didn't come over real good, but for a 1080 screen here, we need to have the frame rate and verify that the frame rate is actually 2997 and that the number of 608 data bytes is 4. So this would be a correct formatted stream for a 1080 transmission. And this is what you would expect. And in this case, if you notice, both times it just says my 608 payload has one caption service in it and my 708 payload has one caption service in it. The other piece that we run into issues is then the number of data bytes actually being sent. If we bring the data analyzer up full screen, it does give you the full hex dump of the entire uh, 708 CDP. In looking at that, the DC or data count field that I have circled in red in the middle of the screen becomes very important. Lately, we've been seeing a lot of different values show up as the data count for the payload, and it's been incorrect. The processing gear typically is trying to parse this data down and is expecting a specific size payload. And when we don't have this, the correct size payload, the data starts getting truncated and we start missing pieces in our SDI stream. And the pieces that we quite often end up missing are pieces that will clear the captions off the screen. So 708, unlike 608, does not have a timeout where captions are placed on the screen and they automatically uh, time out and go off the screen. In 708, once you place the captions on the screen, you have to physically remove the captions. There's codes to either toggle the screen, which means if the window is visible, make it invisible, or actually delete the window from the screen to remove the data off the screen. If that sequence, that two-byte sequence, gets stripped out, you'll end up with captions on the screen, and then the next captions come along, and they'll be laid right on top of the previous captions. So with the CDP length that we are normally expecting for a 720 house without service information, which I'll explain more in just a second, is going to be 43 bytes for our CDP length. For 1080, it's going to be 73 bytes. The service information that is down below is not the number of captioned services, but it is the information that was intended to go into a program map table and into the EITs to indicate how many caption services are being carried by this stream. It is a field that no one has ever used. And personally, I don't know of any encoders that ever look at the caption data to fill out a descriptor in a program map table that's buried down about four layers in a program map table tree. So when people start sending services and they add the service information to it, the length of the caption data packet changes. Most processing gear has never seen anything or doesn't know how to process a CDP that is not the default length of 43 or 73 for 720 or 1080. And we end up with all kinds of weird processing information. So the service information, I've personally never seen it used since 708 captions have started. Uh, people uh, from time to time place it in the stream, but all we've seen is headaches with it. It's legal to put in, 
but not advised to put in because there's a lot of processing gear that honestly doesn't know what in the heck to do with all that extra data. And when they're parsing the data down, they end up barfing and screwing up. So if we look at our auxiliary data status in this case, it states that we have one 608 service, CC1, and one 708 service, service one. So we would expect then the data packet to actually be, if this was 720, which it is, to be a CDP link of 43 as we go through this stuff. So if you look at the top presentation here, my CDP link for my data count is 43 decimolar 22x. And you can see that there is basically two and a little over one and one and a half lines or a half line of data being sent. That's what the parsing gear, either in the set-top box TV or the inline processing gear, is going to expect. The next line down is showing a data count for the same exact service, but they turned on service information. But the problem was they turned on service information indicating that there was two services in the stream when, in fact, there was only one service. This is all from that same stream. The other thing that we have seen, which is really wacky, is people putting on service information and actually indicating that there are three services for a SDI stream that, in fact, only has one caption service in it. So there's been some uh, caption insertion that has been a little wrong lately and it's been really screwing up some captions as of late. So if you go back here and look, we want to see typically 43 or 73, depending on whether you're a 1080 house or 720 house. So if you're getting garbled captions and everything else seems to be correct in what you're getting, the next thing I'd look at is how long is your CDP packet. So even though 52 would be a legal value for the data stream, it's not a normal value that people have seen. So I wouldn't even guarantee that processing gear could actually even understand a value of 52 and actually process it correctly, even though it would be perfectly legal for a service that had uh, one caption service in it and you sent the service information for that one service. If we tear apart a caption service here and look at the CDP, the first two bytes are the sync byte of the caption data packet itself. The, the caption data packet sync is 9669. The next is the data count of how many bytes that we're actually going to send. The third, or actually the fourth packet, the third piece in this, is the frame rate. That is the frame rate that we're showing in that ANTS data screen that I'm talking about. That is going to be the frame rate that you expect this packet to match the frame rate of your video. The thing that you got to remember when either setting up a caption inserter or setting up is the frame rate for 1080i video is 2997, not 5994, which will be indicated on the waveform monitor because the waveform monitor is actually indicating the update rate, i.e. the field rate, not the frame rate of the video. And in this case, if you look over to the right where you see the 2FC, the 1, 1AD, or the uh, 608 CC1 payload and the 608 CC2 payload, that second set of bytes does not have to be the CC2 payload. It actually could be more 608 CC1 data or other data that could get truncated. So when you're a 1080 transmission, you're going to have two sets of what we call triplets. 
So we send a header, two bytes of data, a header, two bytes of data, a header, two bytes of data, and the data is either going to be 608 data or 720 data. The number of bytes for 720 is variable. The number of bytes for the 608 payload is fixed. So for 720, we expect one triplet for the 608 payload. In 1080, since we're putting it in half as often, we have to send twice as much data, so we expect two triplets of 608 data, and then however many bytes of 708 data it takes, but the packet size will always be filled out to equate to that 9600 bits per second. So there's a lot of zeros or 200s being sent in this payload. One of the things, like I said before, this is a uh, capture of when one of the clear or toggle commands actually gets missed and you end up with captions being displayed on top of captions. So we've got a lot of captions that come up, don't clear off the screen, the next set of captions come up, maybe shorter, maybe longer. If it's shorter, then it's going to go on the screen and the captions that it's going on top of are going to be showing through. Uh, some caption decoders can also get very messed up by trying to put multiple windows on the screen and uh, not be able to clear the windows off. Here's a couple of uh, issues that I've seen of late. Uh, the top one is where there's a black line. And I have seen the top come through and the bottom be missing for a number of reasons. One of the reasons is in 708 captions, you have multiple font colors. If someone accidentally puts on a black background and they put on black font, that's exactly what you're going to get. And now you're going to have to get into the codes that are actually being physically sent to set these parameters up, which can be a lot of fun to try to dig out those codes. Uh, the other issue is, is just malformatted captions or somebody sending font colors. Uh, everybody's got it working really well that if you send white text on black backgrounds, we know how to display those. But if somebody starts putting in different font colors, there's a lot of decoders that do not have the ability to display the different fonts in different colors, and they don't know what to do because they've never had uh, any captions with the colors in it to actually prove that it works or doesn't work. So the only thing they've ever seen is white text on black background, and that's what they've built their caption decoders to deal with. The other one down here happens to be just strange text popping up because of format issues within the captions. Uh, if I take this file out and look at it in a captioning tool, and this happens to be Matt Caption, uh, and you look at it, you can see that the one line was put together as a green font and the caption decoder didn't know what to do with a green font. The second piece actually had some formatting issues with it, and it's being shown as being underlined within the caption tool because it doesn't know exactly what the formatting is, knows what the character should be, but it's getting some weird formatting added to it. So this would actually have to be pulled back out either into an SCC file or back into a caption file, reformatted and recaptioned back on the material, or you could try to put it through some of the caption legalizers that are out on the market and hope that they will look at the codes and straighten the codes out going through this stuff. But it, there's a lot of unique things uh, right now. The uh, software that we're looking at right now is uh, actually from Telestream. It's called Matt Caption. Uh, it has the ability to caption things as well as look at several different formats of caption files.
Some other unique issues that we have seen is when captions show up in the wrong place, like that line that is circled right now looks like uh, it was actually the header because it's somebody's name, colon, and then the what they actually said was supposed to be placed on top of the data that was on the screen. For some reason, that was actually sent out of order. So when the captions were actually being built, they actually sent row 12 first, row 13 next, then they went and sent row 11, which is supposed to be on top of row 12. What we found is there's a fair amount of caption decoders that only look at the very first row as an anchor row and are going through and anchoring off of that and then every line change they automatically just put below that so that they don't reparse and reread the row numbers to put the text in in the correct order. You got to remember that on a set top box if they can save a nickel in the parsing gear that and the amount of time that they put into the caption parser, the companies will do it. You know, they're making millions of these set top boxes at a time. And if they can save a nickel in processing or in parts in doing anything, they're gonna do it. So a lot of these caption decoders are take a lot of shortcuts in doing these captions. The other thing you got to remember is that the uh, HDMI coming off of a set-top box, we do not send captions across HDMI. HDMI has no provisions for captions. So if you have a TV set and you have a set-top box and the output of that set-top box is connected to the monitor over an HDMI, the set-top box is doing caption overlay on the video and putting that overlaid video onto the HDMI and sending that to the TV set. The only time a TV set knows anything about captions is if it has an RF feed coming in the back door, an ATSC feed, that it actually has the tuner and is decoding. Anything that you have a set-top box, Blu-ray player or anything like that, sitting in front and feeding that monitor with HDMI, that box is actually doing the caption overlay and not the TV set. And then that's being placed on the screen. Um, we're seeing several questions as we go through this. Um, it's really hard as I'm going through the presentation to catch very many of them. So uh, we'll go back and do some highlighting of the questions and all questions will be answered uh, if we don't get them answered at the end of the presentation. We will definitely follow up with an email. Uh, if it's a question for everybody, we'll answer it uh, with a blast to everybody if it uh, needs to be or we will turn around and answer the questions on a one-by-one -one basis as we go through this. Um, looking here at the MPEG aspects of this brings up a whole nother issue. Uh, if you notice here, this is a very old stream that the primary service of a ATSC stream here was being sent and there was absolutely no captions on the HD service. But the SD service, Program 2, had 608 captions sitting in it. The uh, third program, in this case, had no captions in it at all because it was just a street camera looking down the freeway. Now, this is from many, many, many moons ago. But within the services, this is what we actually should see for all services being sent. Technically, even an SD service that is sent digitally is supposed to have 708 captions in it. So 708 captions does not mean HD captions. If you have a SD service, 
uh, it is legal to put 708 captions on an SD service, and that's actually what's recommended in the practices. Now, right now, the FCC does not care if you put just 608 captions on an SD service. The only thing the FCC cares about right now is that when a customer gets this video, wants to play this video, and wants to have captions on the screen, that the appropriate captions come up on the screen. Uh, be that 708 captions or 608 captions if it's SD. The reason for having the 608 payload in with the 708 is because we do a lot of down conversion of our HD material. And 708 captions are too complex to turn around and down convert back to 608. 708 captions are windowed based captions, not a grid based caption. So you actually place a text box on the screen. You've got eight anchor points where you can start the text on a text box. The text box, you can have eight different text boxes on the screen at the same time for the same service. So the text boxes or the windows are not different services. The windows are meant for different people talking, supposedly, at the inception of all this. So that if you had three different people on this screen, you could actually assign a text box to those three people, and those text boxes would kind of track where those people are moving around on the screen. And on top of that, you might be able to have black font for Joe, a pink font for Sally, and a blue font you know, for Fred, and those fonts and those text boxes would follow them around. Well, in putting all those text boxes on the screen, formatting the fonts and everything else, it's too hard to strip all that out and make it back into a simple grid and column uh, situation that 608 uh, captions are. So that's why in the original service, they mandated that we turn around and have the uh, ability to send just the raw 608 so that, let's say, if Grandma is out there and she's got her $50 set-top box watching a ATSC over the air service, that set-top box is actually doing a down convert to SD and taking the 608 payload and putting it on line 21 and sending it to her TV set. Also, if you think about it, on all of our HD services, even if a service provider only transmits HD, most of the satellite and cable providers have an SD tier and an HD tier. They will down convert that HD to SD to fill the SD tier. They will take that 608 payload out of the 708, make it a line 21 service, and put it on their SD that's going in their SD tier, which is completely unrelated to the people who actually even created the video and the change in the service is happening closer and closer to the end user and not with the people who actually created or did the initial caption insertion with this. There are tools. We have a tool set. This is one of our tool sets uh, that we have for looking at MPEG files. Uh, where we can actually overlay the captions on the screen. We can actually see what we call the buffer window because as the text is being built, it's being sent a few characters at a time, you build the whole phrase and then you place that phrase on the screen. So you want to be able to see that, okay, here's the text coming, and yes, that text is being placed on the screen. The next text is coming, being placed on the screen. What happens once in a while, and I've troubleshot several of these, is you see the text show up, and it goes away. The next text shows up in the buffer window, gets placed on the screen. The next text shows up in the buffer window, goes away, never gets placed on the screen. There is a visible command that says show this data on the screen and that's supposed to be that bit is supposed to be flipped after you've created the entire text so that it doesn't look like you're 
you know, like it's live captioning. It looks like pop-on captions. Like captions come on all at one time. Up in the uh, top right there, you have the ability to say, okay, I want to overlay the 608 service or I want to overlay the 708 service to make sure that it looks correct. And you can go back and forth and overlay the correct service. And then you have the ability down here to look at all the window definition parameters, whether it's the pin parameters, the style parameters, or the window definition parameters of building the 708 windows and how they're built. And if you look down near the bottom, that second yes, the very bottom yes, is the command that would be the toggle command to say, okay, we built this text in the buffer window, now show it on the screen. And that's the window that I have seen missing, or the command that I've seen missing in several files that I've torn apart or several transmissions I've torn apart. And then over on the far right is just what services are actually in the stream. So we'll tell you if they're 708, 608, XDS, uh, SCTE 20 or 21 in there, AFD data. And then we can actually pull up a status window and actually look at the actual data being sent and what fields have been filled out and what they are. The <coughs> uh, the product that I'm actually looking at here uh, is a MPEG analyzer. It's an elementary analyzer that we sell called the MTS. For EA that uh, has the ability to not only look at the elementary video and verify that the element is decodable, but that the ancillary data that comes along with that element is actually being able to be presented on the screen. So it's called the MTS 4 EA software, and we'll uh, highlight that uh, in the answers afterwards. The other piece that I've seen, which has got us in trouble from time to time, is when the data is sent in the SDI stream in the wrong order, or in the MPEG stream, excuse me, in the wrong order. On the left-hand side, every time we take SDI data and then put it into an MPEG stream, we need to extract that 708 data out of the vertical blanking interval, and it gets inserted into a user data field that is right after the extension start code, but just before the actual picture data that would actually build the picture. There's optional fields in here that are called user data fields, and we can place user data in there. On the left-hand side, there's only one user data field in there. It happened to be the caption data. On the right-hand side, is where there was three different pieces of user data being sent. The top piece of user data was some just random data that happened to be in the stream. The second packet in there was actually the caption data. The third user data field was actually the AFD code to go along with the video. This one on the right-hand side is perfectly legal but about 80% of the set-top boxes out there will not decode it and give you captions. The caption parser in most set-top boxes goes down, looks at the first user data field. If it's not captions, they jump directly down to the picture data and start building pictures. They don't scan down and look for multiple user data start codes. Uh, even though it's legal, it's just something I have found that when you do that, it comes up messed up. The data is placed in the MPEG stream, how it is placed in the SDI stream, meaning the first piece of data that is, say, on line 9 is going to get placed first. The data on line 10 will get placed next. The data on line 14 or 11 will get placed after that. So if your captions are not on the lowest line, i.e. line 9, being inserted and you've got other data that is going to get inserted into the MPEG stream, 
you will have issues with the data not being decoded correctly by some set-top boxes. Uh, this is the fun part here uh, that you may have to actually go through to actually find that codes are missing. So this is actually a hex dump of that user data field and the actual commands being sent to display the data, to clear windows, to set the text, to set the colors, to do everything. And this is what you might unfortunately have to go through if you have to troubleshoot why captions are getting garbled and actually look at the captions coming in, look at the commands being sent, know that, okay, I need to look for a given command. That command is my clear command for clearing a window or it's the toggle command. And if those don't show up before the next caption show up, then I'm going to have issues. And it is not a fun job to do. But unfortunately, we've had to go to that depth when equipment uh, has been messing things up. I hope this presentation uh, has been beneficial for you, uh, has been good uh, information. I'll try to go back and answer some of the uh, questions that uh, have been asked as we go along.